Tim, I've been obsessed with the nature of consciousness my entire life, so much so that I did my doctorate in neurophysiology, the electrical activity of the brain, searching for what is it about the human mind that, that makes us conscious and aware of things. Uh, and it seems like there are two radically different views. One is that everything that is mental is entirely based on the brain. Most brain scientists, my associates, think that way. The other, of course, that there's some dualism and a mortal soul, some kind of spirit thing. You've talked about something that seems like a hybrid, kind of a, a soft dualism. How can that work? So we know about ourselves, human beings, that our thoughts, our, our experiences, everything about our mental life that we uh, value so highly is deeply dependent on the functioning of our brain. We know that. Uh, but then the question is, well, what, what are the nature of those states um, that depend on the brain? Is, is everything that goes on in us, mentally speaking, just without remainder, the activity, highly complex, activity of nested structures in our brain, electrophysical activity, or is there something extra? Uh, historically, people have thought you've got two basic options. You could just say human beings are material through and through. Uh, they just are living organisms mm -hmm. and their, their minds just are their brains and nervous systems functioning in the right environment. The other view says, no, the body is like a machine that our mind controls. Our mind is something else. It's our soul. Our, our, it's the center of consciousness. It has its own properties, just like our body has distinctive There's a ghost properties. in our machine. Uh, to there's quote, a ghost yeah. in the machine. Uh, and, but that ghost is the, the, the thing that the has real. all the, the it's, it's the real me. And it's the thing that interacts with my body, as Plato said, going all the way back in Western philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, like a, uh, the, the captain of a ship, mm -hmm. the ship being the body, mm -hmm. and you've got this captain uh, is the, the minded reality. Uh, Plato's conception of the mind just seems deeply implausible on contemporary knowledge. It's not just that I need my brain to function in order to think. The particular ways the brain functions in very subtle ways control whether or not I think at all, right? Uh, you, somebody hits me over the head with a baseball bat. I cease to be conscious, right? There's no, no conscious thought whatsoever. Let's assume I, I, I survive this, but for a period of time, I'm unconscious. It would seem like on Plato's view, it should be as if the pilot loses control over the ship and is sort of no longer can steer the ship, but the pilot can still think his thoughts. But that's not what hap happens, yeah. right? So it seems like our thoughts are, are intimately intertwined with the activity of the brain and its proper functioning. Sure, and we, we sense this unity that everything we have is, is one unity, but if something happens in one part of the brain, I won't be able to see, or I won't be able to read, or I won't be able to talk, and everything else will be the same. So it's very clear that different parts of the brain uh, uh, are responsible for different modalities of sense and thinking, and so that what seems to be a unity is, is an illusion of unity, then there's all this dispersion. So there's no doubt out right. that that's right. So you're pushing me towards a very materialistic yeah. point of view that says that you know, all this soul stuff is, uh, is ancient history and what we are is our physical brain. Yeah, but I want to stop short. I, I think it's possible to, to, to have a, a midway sort of view. Uh, imagine that um, we, we don't yet uh, have the capacity to completely predict what someone is thinking, what they're feeling on the basis of monitoring activity in the brain. But imagine in the future, neuroscientists of the future can hook up your brain to complex computers and the information gets processed and they could say, you're thinking about the problem of consciousness right now and you're also feeling hungry and mm -hmm. you're, you're, the various conscious features you have right now. Um, the description they might give of what's going on in your brain, though, is not capturing, even if it captures causal conditions on those conscious experience, it's not capturing the nature of the experience itself, right? The so-called uh, quality. Of yeah, the, what the it characteristics. What it feels like to That's be right. sitting here and touch the table and see your black shirt. I mean, that has a, a feeling to it. There's a right. personal sense to that. It's an inherently subjective phenomena that, no doubt, is intimately bound up with the right kind of physical complex phenomena, but it, it seems distinct. And it's hard, we, we don't seem to be able to make anything of the idea that these subjective experiences just are 
spread out complex brain states. Uh, so what, what are we to do? Well, uh, I think the way to think about it is to say that our brains, when configured in the right s sort of way, give rise to our conscious experience, cause us to have conscious experience, thoughts, desires, and so forth. Uh, but we don't need anything else. We don't need anything else. Uh, so, so we are fundamentally biological beings, and below that, fundamentally physical beings. Okay. Uh, but So we, we, we have these conscious experiences, but they are themselves not identical to any physical state. They're, they're simply a causal product of the physical states in a continuous, ongoing, evolving, changing way. And causality, mean if A causes B, A and B must be distinct from one another. So even though conscious experience wholly depends causally on the proper functioning of my brain, that doesn't mean it's identical, those experiences. Okay. So just one thing here, I'm a biological thing, uh, but I've got biological properties, physical properties, and yet I've also got these experiential properties, the so-called qualia of experience, and they interact. So my experiences, just as they are the product of uh, the nature of my brain at any given moment, they also in turn affect because we think my desire for a glass of water can lead in the right circumstances to a physical event of my reaching for a glass of water. So that's a harder move to make. Okay. The first move where the brain is producing these things that we have this conscious feeling, one can make that argument to where I feel that that's legitimate, um, but it, it could be sort of what we call epiphenomenal, which means it's sort of there, it's sort of riding the crest of this wave, but it, it has no causal features that go back down. Because if you're, if you're now saying it can go the other way, where what you've created from brain states is now has some independent existence, uh, still 100% caused by it. Now that that can go back and change the brain states, that seems like a harder move to make. Uh, well, this idea of uh, mental states being epiphenomenal, being uh, distinct from, but merely the, the effects of brain states and not doing anything in their own right, uh, I would say is a deeply problematic idea and ultimately it, it becomes a, a paradoxical conception of ourselves. First of all, it's, it's, it's problematic because everything we know about in, in the world does something. It has some influence, right? The lowliest pebble on a beach has some gravitational influence on what's going on around it. So reality is causal through and through. So if it's right that uh, organized brains give rise to special kinds of states that are irreducible to the underlying brain states. No, but they're caused Surely by they brain do states. That's they're, right. they're caused by brain states, but not reducible to brain states. Yes. But so what are they? They are subjective states. You can only know about them directly by having those states. But they are composed of all the physical properties of neurons that create this. No, they're not, they're not physically composed at all. They're, they're utterly physically dependent okay. on the complex state of the brain. But they are properties of the, the looks of colors and the, the tastes of, of, of subjective experience we have when we taste things. These are different, fundamentally different kinds of properties. Is this so-called property dualism as opposed to substance dualism? Substance dualism being there's a real separate platonic soul or right. spirit from some you know, religious spirit that's a real separate substance. But this is a, a property dualism. Yes, I think that would be a way to, to characterize what I'm saying. You've got a duality. When it comes to conscious beings, you've got a fundamental duality of properties. Physical properties, which are highly complex and structured in our case, because we're very complex physical beings. And then these mental properties, which are not identical to physical properties. So these are not char properties of charge, mass, and, and the sorts of properties physicists attribute to. But they're all caused by those they properties. They are caused by those properties. So the question is, is that a distinction, which it is a distinction, therefore right. property duals. Is that a distinction without a difference? Because you're still locked into the material world 100%. Uh, I, I think it's, it, it is a distinction with a difference because it it means that they are realities in their own right and they have an influence. It seems to me a virtue of this way of thinking about it, not a drawback, that it posits that the, the natural world is, at the end of the day, a unity. Causally speaking, it's one unified totality. We don't have to have minds coming from from nowhere, somehow, even though they don't have spatiotemporal location, interacting with bodies that do have very precise spatiotemporal locations. So it's a virtue of, of, of the, this picture, that it's one unified totality. But unlike materialism, it uh, affords us a picture on which 
Our thoughts and experiences make a fundamental difference to how things unfold.